Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Pro Physique Code. We are your, or this is the lifestyle series. And um, today it is me, Coach Christina, and then I have a special guest with Coach Steven. How are you doing? Hey, I feel special. You are so special. special. I even like, I'm trying to have my life together. I, I did my hair. Um, I didn't shave, obviously, but uh, <laughs> so my life is only so much together. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, it's it's podcast life, right? I have accidentally realized I've started like not a not on person the purpose habit of only washing my hair like once a week and then just having to hide it. And it's just like, I think it's because it's the end of summer, right? And like the kids had their first day of school today. And I thought to myself last night, it was like, I don't know the last time. I reminded Riker to shower and I'm just going to have to run with it. (laughs) I don't have time for it tonight. And so, you know, as we slowly get our life together, um, little things like doing your hair and hiding my greasy hair, they're wins. (laughs) But you're not supposed to like, obviously. So balding is a big thing for me. Um, And I'm always convinced that I'm going more and more bald. And then I look at like my picture from when I was 18. I'm like, Oh no, my my hairline's just always been very high, and my hair's always been very the the bald spot in the back is becoming more. But like, you're not supposed to wash your hair every day, apparently. Like, it's not yeah. good for the scalp. It makes you go balder quicker. Right. I, I don't want that. <laughs> There's like all sorts of stuff with it because then sometimes they'll say like it's good for your hair to have sweat in it, and then it's not. Good. I don't know. I go back and forth. It just comes down to the fact that like I don't have the bandwidth nor the time to deal with washing my hair every day. It's like. Yeah time issue as opposed to I'm trying to do something nice for my hair <laughs> mm, yeah see mine lately has been because uh for those of you who don't know I just had a knee reconstruction for my ACL and my meniscus so it's a pain to like get in the shower and do all the shower things so like, if I don't do anything that day like dude I'm I'm gross I'm like oh I'm just sitting my I'm like that I gotta force just the the body shower even <laughs> yeah right you just do like the um spit shower just like baby wipes that's what you need <laughs> uh, it's, it's no good no we need a real shower i i need to be clean it's it's maybe that's a good lead into like i need to be clean because it's part of my mental health <laughs> well that's what i was gonna say is this is kind of perfect as we're talking about the health of our hair healthy habits things like that taking care of ourselves so today we are going to talk about the like definition of health which um you know, pretty broad topic, right? But like, that's what's exciting. And especially with it being the lifestyle series. Um, I I know I talk to a lot of people who have very different definitions or ideas of what they need to do. Um, actually, just this morning, I was talking to a client about one, I'm sure you hear a lot, um, where she was like, I'm trying to keep my sugar down. So I've stopped eating fruit because it's too high in sugar. <laughs> and right. then you know, where, and then, but she's also having digestion issues. And so I was like, you know, it would help with that. Those sugary fruits (laughs) and a little bit more fiber. And so there's a lot of things to consider. So, you know, we'll try and touch on the stuff that I think that we hear about a lot and that are really important considerations with just making sure that we're diving into a lifestyle that is healthy and maintainable. Cause there's a lot of things that people try out for like in the pursuit of a healthy lifestyle that are not right. And they think it's like a jump start. Like, Oh, I'll just do this thing that makes me feel like shit. And that doesn't really make sense for health. And it's going to make me better down the road. And it's like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> well, I, mean, I think the, the easy way to start with health Like, all right, so what's the definitions? Like when I, if I look up the definitions on Google, right? The the noun, state of being free from illness or injury, right? Um, Then a person's mental or or physical condition. So like now we're bringing the the psychological or the mental aspect in, right? Um, So I think those are both obviously super duper broad, but great ways to kind of understand like how broad it can be. And then understanding why I think maybe some of our preconceptions or ideas of what health is or isn't um, can be influenced because like, how often do you go to your doctor once a year and like, all right, great. You look healthy. Your blood works good. Everything's solid, you know, body works great. And then like inside you're, you're dying. You're just like, man, like every day is a struggle. It's hard to get up. I, I'm forcing myself to to get to work. Right. Like 
okay, cool. So, so maybe our physical health is really good, but our mental health is struggling. Um, and then maybe it's on the, the other end of the spectrum, right? Maybe we feel really good. We, we love how we look, you know, we're happy about it. We're really practicing um, positive mindset stuff. But then we, when we do go to the doctor, they have a lot of concerns. Like, hey, maybe these things aren't working right. Um, these things are out of range on, on your blood work that creates some, um, some concerns for me for risk factors, right? Um, you know, maybe physically we're, we're not in a good place. And especially as we're getting older, like, hey, I, I'm really worried about your ability to have a, a higher quality of life as we get older um, because maybe we're not taking care of ourselves so well. Um, you know, like th there can be a really big difference there. Um, it, it, it's funny because I was giving my mom a hard time the other day. She's finally like old enough to do silver sneakers and get the free gym membership stuff that's covered. Yeah. And so I've officially begun nagging mode uh, where I'm just texting her like twice or three times a week. I was like, hey, did you go get a gym membership? Because, you know, it, it's just like, <clears throat> I want her to continue to be able to do things for herself. Um, and I want her to be able to like, God forbid something happens, have strong bones, uh, be able to get back up, you know, yeah. be able to deal with those things just in case, you know, like the unexpected does occur. Um, I think I saw, so I, I want to say it was Dick Van Dyke. I saw a meme about like the other day where it had quotes from him, where he was talking about like in his thirties, he worked out to look good in his forties. He worked out to feel good in his fifties. He kept working out to like stay, um, to still feel strong with things. And like, he was like, now in my nineties, I do it just to piss other people off. <laughs> and like, <laughs> they're like a big part of his goal went from being like aesthetic into being able to continue taking care of himself. And then now that he's in his nineties, he's like, I do it because people are just baffled that I can still do this. And I mean, he's still alive, right? Is that terrible that I'm saying that? Was it like an old quote? I've like lost I mean... track of everyone we've lost. Like, over the last few years, I wasn't As really a, into Dick Van Dyke. Um, no so, I, so he's still hanging around. Sorry, sorry, Dick, <laughs> that I yeah. worried about you. <laughs> um, I mean, good for him though. Right, and that's something because I I do work with a lot of clients who are you know either. Um, beginning menopausal symptoms or their postmenopausal that comes up a lot. And one of the big considerations that I have is I, I think especially, I mean, I primarily work with women, right. Who are in these like phases of life where we already have things kind of working in a different way, right. That might work against some of the things that they want to do with their bodies. And then what they'll want to go back to is some habits that are really just going to exacerbate that and make things yeah. even worse. And so then I have to bring that up where I'm like, look, your body is already doing things that like is not going to lead to healthy bones on its own. It's not going to lead right. to a healthy hormonal balance on its own. And so then if we turn around and try to survive off of like a handful of nuts twice a day and a bottle of wine, like, and then we're not working out, this isn't going to help you get off the toilet by yourself in 10 right. years. And so sometimes we have to reconsider, like, am I doing things strictly because I think it's going to help aesthetically at the risk of feeling terrible all the time? Or am I doing the things that truly make sense across the board? Because that's where the mental health side comes into it too. Because if you're choosing habits in the name of like looking healthy, but they're making you feel terrible mentally and like physically too, like, what are we doing? Like we've lost track of the real goal here. Yeah. And that's the, you know, especially working with women and, you know, I, I wish it was I don't know that I wish it was only limited, but it's not limited to women that are, you know, pre-menopausal and going through menopause. Um, there are so many people out there um, that really kind of just define health by the scale alone or, yes. um, you know, and that's a dangerous thing because the scale and the mirror can be two very different things in the first place. Um, and, you know, the scale it's it's kind of old school um not to say that bmi can't be useful um i think it has a place uh for sure in terms of health risks and that kind of stuff but i think we also understand that you know the the bmi index stuff also is maybe a little bit outdated particularly for people who are um 
you know, involved in things like weight training, sports, athletics, and, you know, tend to carry a little bit more muscle around than maybe what we used to. Um, but I tell you what, th there are so many women that I talk to and I meet that just have this idea that they're not healthy unless the scale says a specific number or it's under that number. Um, and, man, you know, it's just such a dangerous way to think. But realistically, society has has told people that that is the truth for a very, very long time. Not even just health, because it has this huge effect on your mental health, because worth, attraction, you know, all this kind of stuff that also comes into it. And it's not, you know, it, it's not necessarily the truth. Um, and, and it's definitely one of those big things that it, it can be very hard to break that thought process. Um, and, and then the other thing is, is you can get so used to feeling terrible all the time that you forget that feeling that, that you forget that you feel terrible. You become desensitized to it. Yeah. It's like the smell of dogs in the house. You're like, oh, yeah, there's no smell in my house. Um, but as soon as someone else comes into your house, like, oh, kind of smells like dogs in here. Like, hey, what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think you're exactly right with that. And, you know, that comes down to you know, that people will talk about healthy weight. And what I always find is kind of interesting in consult calls is when somebody does have a number that they want to get to that they'll lead with. And then I'll ask like, okay, well, when is the last time you were that weight? And yeah. sometimes it's one they've never been at. Right. And it's like, well, then how right. do we know where is this magic number coming from? But I know even for myself, like, so when I met Vic, and like was in my early twenties, I, so I'm five, seven, um, one fifty was like a normal weight for me. And I was mostly running. I wasn't lifting very much, but like one fifty was like a normal weight. I didn't think that I could really hang out lower than that. And then over time, um, you know, before I started competing, I got to like the one forties, I had started lifting at that point that became normal enter competition and seeing yourself prep lean and things like that. And then it was like, I have to be 130 with like visible abs and seeing striations <laughs> and things like that. And it's funny because it really has happened where like the more kids I've had and the more I've seen my body like go through these different phases, I think it's really helped with my own like body image and what I see as healthy for myself because, you know, two or three years ago, hanging out at like 142 would have stressed me out like every single day, right? Well, like this is wrong. And I wouldn't have paid attention to everything that my body is capable of doing and right. my healthier relationship with food. And so it comes down to like your healthy weight. If all other things considered are in a good range, right? Like we don't have any issues at the doctor. We don't have any things that we're like working to improve when it comes to health markers. If the, that's all fantastic. Right then your healthy weight really comes down to one where you can make healthy decisions and chill there and not be beating yourself up routinely for not being perfect or smaller and like things like that. Like that's one where um, I'm kind of glad I don't hear it as much anymore, but like the focus on clean eating and <laughs> as like a health thing, right? And it was like, well, I do eat really healthy because I only eat clean foods. And I'm like, well, <laughs> what happens if you have ice cream? Like if you all of a sudden like melt into this puddle of like no self-worth and you hate yourself because you gave in to eating something that wasn't clean, then like maybe the clean eating diet isn't a super healthy, like focus for you. Yeah. And I think it, it comes back to this idea that like health is this range. Like when you go in and the doctors are looking at your blood work, they're looking for you to be within a range of variables, right? Um, it's not like, Hey, this one number is good, uh, and perfect. And that's it. Uh, and so I think we have to kind of get out of this mindset that there's, there's only one answer, um, to, to the idea of health, because you just, you want to be within the range. And obviously for different people, the same number within those ranges is going to feel, look, um, different. It's, it's going to be different. Uh, so understanding that, okay, this is, there, there's some pliability here right? There, there's some movement that can happen. And so what may be healthy for you might not be as healthy for me. And, and that changes over time as well, right? Like as we're younger, cool, a, a healthy amount of protein is going to look different than as we age and maybe 
how we digest protein and what we need for that to do its job, right? It, it changes as we age. Um, we also have, you know, the body wants to lose muscle as we age. So we might need to change that protein intake as we get older. Um, we might need to change our training philosophy as we age because we're not going to uh, be recovering the same way. You know, anybody in their 30s who's gotten hurt knows very well it's not the same as when I got hurt when I was 22. Uh, <laughs> coming from the guy with, you know, uh, the bum knee right now, it, it's just not the same. Um, and so even with my training stuff, when I was in my 20s, I could do everything and anything and feel great. Um, and I learned quickly in my early 30s, I was like, that ain't the same. Um, to make progress, I had to train less. It wasn't always about do more, do more, do more. Um, and so, you know, when we get into that, we say, okay, what is this range? What's most important to me? Um, because for me in my 20s, what was most important to me? Playing music partying, having a blast. I wasn't thinking about any of that stuff. I, I didn't care. In my 30s, you know, now it's like, all right, well, my lifestyle is a really big part of my health. And not even necessarily like good blood work, you know, feeling good about how I look, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. Yeah, sure. The superficial stuff is there. But like being active makes me feel better. I get some endorphins there. Um, I enjoy doing jujitsu and martial arts. Um, that that's huge for me. And not only is that endorphins and physical activity and good for my cardiovascular health, but it's good for my mental health because it's a big social group thing. We stay, we talk, we hang out, it's your friends. Um, I know a lot of people get mad when they see people at the gym, just like hanging out and talking. And, but realistically, that's a big part of health. And if you're not able to get out of the house all the time, or you don't have a great support group, maybe the gym is where your friends are at. And so maybe part of your health in the gym is actually having some of that social component there. Um, so, you know, it's, you have to understand and realize that like, there's no one right answer. There, there's multiple right answers. There's multiple different ways to do it. Uh, and like, that's, that's okay. Like that's kind of the beauty of it is figuring out how do we do something that works for you? And going back to the clean eating thing, there's obviously benefit to clean eating. We know that whole foods and, you know, foods that have your micronutrients are going to be good for you. But at the same point, if you think that's all that you can do, and now the second we have a little bit of ice cream or that little bit of cookie hits our lips and everything's out the door, well, I mean, obviously we're not keeping things in range there. So right. is that a healthy habit for us? Some people, maybe, maybe you're cool with just eating clean foods and that's it. And tilapia and asparagus and rice and broccoli, that's your jam. And it it really fulfills you and gives you a fulfilling life. Um, and you're cool with that. But it ain't for me. Like, I want to go out. I, like, one of my favorite meals is like biscuits and gravy. Welcome to the South. Uh, my grandpa used to make it when we were kids. It brings back a ton of great memories. And it to think that I could never have biscuits and gravies again would be an absolute like deal breaker. Right. Um, so you have to be able to work that stuff in at least to some degree. Maybe I'm not going to eat the whole plate, but I need to be able to have a couple bites. I need to eat, be able to do it to some degree and not have to feel guilty about that. Because I mean, realistically, morally, there's nothing wrong with biscuits and gravy, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I haven't heard anything yet, so I think you're good to go. Um, I had an interesting conversation with Vic this morning when we were talking about like the topic for this podcast and, um, you know, so we're in, he's going to be, uh, 36 in September. So we're, um, Ooh, welcome, welcome to the suck, my friend. <laughs> right, right. He, so I'm six months older than him and I, I've been like bitching about stuff already where I'm like, I'm closer to 40 than I am 30. And he's like, shut up. We are in our mid thirties. It's fine. But, um, you know, injuries is something that like that you had brought up where training for us and being physical is very important to our mental health. Um, and then, you know, being parents of four and especially because, you know, our two oldest right now, are athletes, our toddler is like definitely destined for that because he's just so physical and loves being strong. Like at three, he comes out and does pull-ups and stuff with Vic. And so like, we want to be able to keep up with them. And yeah. like, we're already looking to being like, 
active grandparents. Like I don't want to be a grandparent that just, you know, has to sit and watch with stuff. I still want to be chasing children at that point. And so, you know, and trying to think ahead, but Vic had brought up, cause I was like talking about like, what is health or when do healthy habits become not so healthy, like with things. And he was like, well, I'd be curious what you'd say like about me with stuff because so he's got this elbow (laughs) situation he's got like um I forget what it is but I want to say he has like a dead like tendon or something like that or it's like dying and like the surgery they would need to do is they'd have to cut off like a significant portion of it and then pull it down and like re-tack it and it would have a super long recovery Mm. and be painful and everything and so he's and we've known about this for like four or five years. And his choice is like, he's just kicking that can, right? Like I'll deal with it Mm -hmm. later. I'll deal with it later. And, um, we were talking about how like today he's not lifting because his elbow and his shoulder bothering him from like a recent training session. He did something weird with his shoulder. Whenever you're lifting weights with toddlers running around underfoot, it's like a whole different game. Cause you're like, they're distracting and you don't want to drop things on them. Um, and so I think Danger he was zone. And, right, like exactly. Song, right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and, you know, so for him, he was like, here I am balancing this thing where like, I I'm going to take today off, but like I, I'll lift tomorrow, even if I'm achy and it's bugging me. And there's probably some people who would be like, well, you should like rest it for the health of the joint and like do these kinds of things. But for his version of health, like it's more important to him that he keeps that movement in there, does what he can. He does some PT exercises with it and stuff like that. And I know for me, like cardio is the same way. And like, I'll talk to other people and I always try to lead with like, if I'm telling them don't lean too much on cardio for their physical goals, I'll be like, you know, I recognize that I'm a hypocrite and I am like the cardio queen out here training for marathons and stuff. Like I love (laughs) cardio, but I've accepted, you know, I'm probably not going to pack on a whole bunch of muscle at the same time because I'm doing this. I also have to eat more to maintain yep. my cardio so that I don't lose that muscle. Cause I don't want to look like a marathon runner. And so there's like all these different considerations in that range that you're talking about of like, you know, people will talk about balance and I feel like <laughs> things are never really balanced, right? There's a give and a take yeah. all the time. And you just have to figure out, you know, the big thing that I talk to people about is figuring out what makes your life the most joyful in situations. If it's eating, you know, rice, protein, and veggies for a lot of the meals during the week. So that on the weekend, you can go ham on a plate of biscuits and gravy and like your overall life is super joyful. Hell yeah. Like you're doing it. Right. And I think that's like what we have to try and consider is like, are the things you're doing towards health are, are they getting you results and are you miserable or like, could we tweak things and make it so that we're balancing stuff a little bit better? And that's where like, sometimes the numbers, when people have a very tight range, get them in trouble because it's like, if I'm not perfect, everything's wrong. And then it crumbles and then they go the complete opposite direction with everything. And I think like, it's also important to understand like different perspectives, different places in time will all have different impacts on what your version of health is. Cause like you said, Vic needs surgery, but he's trying to put it off. Right. I mean, that was literally my, my approach. I knew something was wrong with my knee. I knew I tore it a year and a half ago in that tournament. Um, so I didn't realize I'd completely torn it. Um, and then it wasn't attached, but I was also making it by, um, little did I know I was tearing my meniscus in half. So when I finally got the MRI and went to the doctor, he's like, look, your meniscus is torn. You don't have a bucket handle tear yet, which is where it flips in underneath itself. And then your knee locks up and you're done. Like right. now, it, yes, you have to get surgery, period. But, you know, we've had the wedding plan coming up in like a little over a month here. Uh, we had planned to go snowboarding and skiing uh, for the uh, like a delayed honeymoon and all this other stuff. And he's like, look, if you put it off, you risk it locking up and creating an issue because of where it's at at this point. And then my other thing was, I was like, look, I, I said to myself, Stephen. I can get this done and deal with the aftermath of it now and get back to being better. And realistically, that way I have more time being better, hopefully, than putting it off, possibly still having issues, still being in pain, whatever the case might be, and then still having to go through the fix later on anyways. Right. Um, So for for me, 
I was like, let's just get it over with. So I get more good years out of life in general. Um, and so that was really big for me, but it's one of those things where it's like, how do you make that decision? Cause I don't have kids. Right. So it's, it's not a big deal. So for me, yeah, Jillian can help out while I can't work for, or can't walk for six weeks, but I can still work and still do everything I need to do. And yes, we have a, a large puppy right now, which is kind of a pain, but it's not like through the roof. It's not putting anybody over their limit. Whereas right. with all the kids at home right now, if Vic doesn't have one arm, that may also be a real issue. So like that health, it's like, you got to keep the main thing, the main thing. Right. So like, if the main thing for me, if I have kids in a family, that's my main thing. Everything else comes after that. They're making, I'm making sure they're supported. I'm making sure they have what they need. At least I think I am because I don't have any kids yet. So we'll see how, when that day comes, but you know, like that is my end all be all. That is my number one period. Um, so even though maybe I could get it done, the better thing for my balance, for my life, for my person, for my family is for me to just kind of like work around it for the time being especially if he knows it's not going to be a huge thing or create extra issues. Like, okay, we can put it off until maybe there's a better time in life um, when we can get that done and fixed. And like, guess what? That's also awesome. That's cool. Like, that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, I think like awareness of stuff can be smart too. Like you went in, you knew there was something up and then like went and got it checked with things. And then you can make those decisions. Uh, he's gone in a couple of times, seen a couple of different doctors to get opinions on what things are. We know what the issue is. It's not necessarily like progressing or anything. And so he can do what he's doing, like in add in some PT exercises. He found like grip strength is a big part of like, um, it helps improve stuff. And so he works that into there. And I think avoidance is what we see a lot of too, where people are afraid of something, sure. getting an answer regarding their health and they have a, a feeling, but they don't want to hear it out loud. And so then it's like, I'm just not going to ask the question because then I have to deal with it. And right. like, that's not helping anybody. And if anything, like, you know, we don't know what's happening then with your health. And what is that mental toll of the anxiety of like that little nagging voice? That's like, something's wrong with your knee, dude. Like, you know, every day yeah. <laughs> being like, <laughs> and so then you're thinking about it all the time. And it's like, w at least go find out what it is. And like you said, get your options of, well, what if I did wait? What if I don't? Um, same thing with like, so my mom um, has RA and then uh, we found yeah. out super late in life that my grandfather, her dad also had RA. And so it's, it's not unlikely that, you know, me and my siblings might end up with it. And, you know, they had said she didn't find out till she was in her fifties and they said, things can start to pop up in your mid to late thirties with stuff. Mm -hmm. And so, um, of course I'm just like a hypochondriac too, like with things. So <laughs> I don't know, I'm back to lifting heavier. Right. But I have like a very angry, um, knuckle on my middle finger. And a lot of times it'll start like in your hands and things like that, where you'll like see the symptoms. And so the next time I go into the doctor, as much as part of me is like, it's not that bad. You could just ignore it until it is really bad. I could go have them run blood work to start looking for certain markers and like things like that. And then I could potentially catch it sooner so that when I'm in my fifties, I'm not in terrible pain and like not being able to use things and stuff like that. And we live in like a really interesting time where for a lot of stuff, you can get a lot of early information regarding yes. things. And I get that a lot of that can be scary. Like, um, you know, they have what you can get like the blood tests now, right. To see if you have the markers for like certain, um, hormonal based cancers and things like that for women. And like, that's kind of, I'm sure that can be really nerve wracking. Like I think Angelina Jolie is like one of the famous examples of that, where like, I think her mom died of like breast and ovarian cancer. And so she went and found out, um, that she like ha had the risk factors. And so went ahead and like took care of everything and was like, just take it. And that way I don't have to deal with it. And, you know, so you can go super extreme like that way. But I think, um, you know, it surprises me a lot, especially people that are like my age or older who are like, well, I just don't go to the doctor or I just don't ask questions or I don't get blood work. And like, I'm not somebody who's crazy about it where like, I don't have like this huge routine, but I think, you know, if there's something where you're like, Hmm, I wonder 
go find right. out. Don't find it, like get the information. That way you can make smart decisions moving forward and you don't have to be ultra reactive in the future. Yeah, and I get it. Um, you know, doctors are expensive. Yeah, My health insurance, like, dude, I, I hit my max out of pocket this year. Like, and- Well, I bet you like, did let me with tell that you, surgery. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude. I think it was like, the initial was like 33,000 is what they were gonna try and charge me or something, which you know is always- bogus like if you have insurance they always talk it down you can always yeah. talk to the hospital and stuff if like um you have uh financial concerns and stuff so you know there there is some help there but like i get it like the stuff's expensive i don't want to spend money on that like i don't want to spend money so i can you know have nine to twelve months of pt and rehab and all this other stuff like it right. sucks but you know at a certain point the the juice has to be worth the squeeze so to speak right it, yeah. it has to be worth it um, and again, for you and as an individual, you have to make that determination decision. I think so often we we come in and, and maybe you are even like the person that's listening to this podcast and you're like, okay, give me the one answer for me. And I was like, that's hard. Like, I, I can't give you any one answer for you. I can kind of tell you what works for me and what my experience has been. Uh, I'm definitely going to encourage you to talk with the people that are important to you, to talk with your healthcare professionals and find out what that right decision is for you. Um, because it's not, it's so simple, yet it's not so simple. Yeah. It, it's this real conundrum of like, how do we find that place where, and I, I'm not one to believe that you should always be happy. Like if you're always happy, something's wrong. Um, We're you going, know, we, we need challenge. Yeah. <laughs> we need challenge. We need that stuff. Um, and maybe there's always going to be seasons, right? Winter comes and goes. Spring always comes after winter. Um, but there are going to be times when things are tougher and easier, but you, you have to figure out how do you make them within range, what's reasonable as best possible. Um, I, I think one of the best examples I had was when I would always choose really great people to date. So there'd be real highs and real lows on the roller coaster. And you'd always be between the two. You'd never be in like that normal manageable spot. Like, man. You know how good it was when I finally started getting into relationships when things were just manageable? It wasn't the world was uh, ending and it wasn't, you know, everything's the best it's ever been and and everything's perfect. It was just like, hey, things things are manageable. We can handle this and I can still live the rest of my life and do the things and we can do them together and apart and blah, 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 right? Good. So like my my goal is to make things manageable to where like I still enjoy life at least enough um, and I'm taking care of the things I need to take care of. Um, but that's tough. And, and it like moving into that, that takes a lot of mental health work. <laughs> and that is not easy uh, because you know what? I hate calling myself out. I hate having to admit that I'm wrong or I screwed up or I've been doing the very thing that's holding me back from the thing I say I want so much. Like, ooh, that sucks. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Yeah, 100%. I love that example of using like a good relationship and the fact that usually the ones that end up lasting a long time and that you can really settle into. Um, and especially like, so with marriage, right? Vic and I have been married since 2011 um, and we have a hundred kids. Um <laughs> <laughs> You know, what's so the one thing you'll see people talk about sometimes is how you end up like you can end up in like the roommate phase where, you know, you've been together and living together and putting this life together for so long that sometimes you lose those big, big highs. And hopefully you're not having the low lows where you're fighting all the time, or like anything like that. And you do kind of get to this like um, cruise control like zone where you're like, you're solid with that. But I feel like that's where like a lot of depth and comfort can come into a situation and security. And it can be the exact same way with your lifestyle. But what you see a lot. And I think I can't remember if it was on before we started recording, but, um, people will seek out these changes to their lifestyle where they're like, okay, mm -hmm. for me to get to that happy cruise control place first, I'm going to go keto and I'm just going to cut out all carbs for like three weeks. 
and I'm not going to have anything fun. I'm never going to eat sugar again. I'm going to work out seven days a week for like three hours a day. And I'm not going to, I'm, you know, zero alcohol. Like they're going to cut out all joy from their life. And they're like, if I just go like super deprivation mode, it'll make it easier in a month to be middle of the line. And I think it's kind of that same thing. And it probably goes to say a little bit about like, just how a lot of us are these days where we need that like dopamine hit and we want like the instant reaction and we yep. it we feel almost more alive if things are either super fucking fantastic or <laughs> they're so hard that we're forced to grow right and it's like i have to be in one of these zones for it to be okay when really like things will last longer. You'll do better. You'll respond better. All the, if you search for the cruise control, you know, like, and in the hair, right? Right. Exactly. And just get to that like smooth place instead of having to make it be these huge ups and downs. And I think a lot of that, like you said, with them having to have that mental health and the mental strength there, and you can tie that with the relationship piece, but it has to be your relationship with like yourself and your goals and what you're working on that you don't have to be <laughs> so crazy with stuff. <laughs> it sucks so bad. Like, it does. <laughs> uh, it's like, uh, you know, and, and not everybody loves the idea of therapy. And I know there's still plenty of things there, but like, man, I always hated going to therapy. Like I always knew I needed to. I always like, I felt terrible, but somehow better afterwards, like just so drained just talking about things and, and trying to work through them and figure out how to be like, but man, like, it, it was good. And and then there's this other consideration, right? Like, yes, the highs and lows are all exciting, but like, who's to say that hitting rock bottom makes you better? Like the, there's no guarantee there. Like why not work on some things small, like take small bites, work on, okay. Hey, I, I go really hard on the weekends. All right. So maybe on the weekends, I'm going to limit myself to two drinks. Yeah. Right. That's not crazy. That's super reasonable and feasible. All right. Take off like digestible pieces of that. Um, work at it one thing at a time, bit by bit and things that, you know, you feel are reasonable. Like why set yourself up with a lower chance for success by trying to change everything at once? Like right. I can't do that. I'm, I'm not going to be able to, I definitely wouldn't expect anyone else, but can you say, Hey, Steven, um, can you try and be a little bit more thoughtful um, of my feelings when you're agitated. Okay. Yeah. I, I can try and work on that and maybe I'm not perfect and maybe I have to apologize afterwards. Um, or maybe I, you know, just example, something has to go out, but like it brings mindfulness to it. Um, which is why, like, what do you feel like physical and mental were your two biggest wins or things that helped you with your, your version of health, your definition of health? Yeah. So, um, I mean, so like physically, I, I don't know if I hadn't talked about it on like the podcast before, and then it came up like one or two episodes where somebody had asked us a question on our Q and a about eating disorders. And I struggled big time with one for like 12 years where like it ran my life and it was not cute. And it made me like, I tried to hide things a lot and like things like that. And, um, like it ran my life and my thought patterns. I wasn't healthy. I wasn't making good choices. It ran to, or I wound up with like, um, you know, either binge eating behaviors or like trying to restrict a lot and stuff. And I'm super lucky that I found Vic and that our relationship is the way that it is because he was the first person that I was ever able, where I felt like I had to say something to him. Like it wasn't fair anymore for me to try and hide stuff and that I had to talk to him. And then that communication towards like, okay, well, I'm trying to do this stuff because I think it's going to make me healthier and it's not. And like, I'm struggling opened up a lot physically and mentally for my health with things. And I was able to make better decisions across the board. And so like in pursuit of physical health, a big thing has been like focusing more on how my body can perform, um, yeah. versus how it looks. And then what ends up happening is you look better because you're performing better. And, you know, so then I, you know, eat to actually feel better, not just for aesthetics, but like, 
there are delicious foods where, okay, so even biscuits and gravy, I love it too, right? Like we lived in Virginia forever and I miss yes. their biscuits and gravy so much. Um, but I know now that at a lot of places, if I have something like that, I'm going to feel like shit afterwards. Like my body just responds funny. I'm old enough where I'm probably going to get some version of heartburn. Um, I'm going to swell up from the sodium. And so it's not something I say no to, but it's not something I'm going to have all the time. And it's not because I'm afraid I'm going to get fat. It's because I'll feel like shit the rest of the day or, you know, drinking. I love wine. I have realized in my thirties, if I have one glass of wine, I am not going to sleep well. I'm going to wake up super hot. My heart's going to race all day long. And so it's making small changes. Like I'm a beer girl now. It doesn't mess me up. I can have one or two feel good, move on with my day. And so a lot of it, I mean, really came down to being much more honest with myself about like, what am I looking for out of this? Like I've been very, very lean with competing. And then I tried to live at a very lean place where I was like, okay, I want to stay right here and I'll do everything I can. But for me to do that, I have to be so neurotic about everything that it sucked a lot of the joy out of all the other stuff. And then it's like, is this worth it? Am I healthy at this place? And so I think just, you know, in terms of what I've done to help with both a lot has been communication and a change in focus to performance over aesthetics overall. And I recently lost both of my grandparents on my mom's side and they died earlier than they probably should have. And both of them had things going on with their bodies that they just didn't deal with. And honestly, towards the end, it was infuriating where I was like, this is your fault, like that you feel this way and that things aren't getting fixed and stuff. And so that was like eye opening for myself and for my mom, where, you know, she had some things that maybe she wasn't taking care of the right way. And it's like, we don't want to go out like that. We don't want to feel like that at the end. And so we have to take better care of ourselves and prioritize that kind of stuff. And so that's been a big thing for me. What about you? Yeah. So I think when it comes to the physical health stuff, honestly, for me, I think it started with competition, kind of getting into some of the physique stuff. Um, Not to say that it made my health the best because my first prep definitely was not the healthiest. It wasn't done in in a great way. Um, You know, I definitely regained a lot of weight very fast within a week. Even I'm talking like 15, 20 pounds within, within a week. Um, But it kind of got me into the realm. Um, and it made me realize uh, there's got to be better ways I can do this. There's got to be something that works better for me. That's more reasonable that I feel better. Like that's when I started getting into like, all right, who are the people that are looking at the science and actually paying attention to how things work and what that means. Um, and that's when I decided to start like, that's all you know what I'm going to, I'm going to get my bachelor's in exercise science. And that, that was like the beginning of it all was competition. Um, and obviously, yeah, it, it did a lot of other good things for me because for those of you who know me, ADHD, what's up? Um, I can be all over the place sometimes. I was like, gonna it, it, can be, it can be wild and I'll definitely have times where I overshare too. Um, so welcome to your new best friend. Um, if you have a conversation with me and you just pique the right interest or say the right thing. <laughs> well, so that's what's um, so interesting about this because I found out when I went in to try and get checked out for postpartum, like depression or anxiety, they, I had two different doctors that were like, that's not your issue. You have ADHD. And if you could fix that, you'd feel less anxious and freaked out about everything like all yes. the time. So you keep going, but then we should dive into that afterwards, how that's affected mental and physical health for us. <laughs> totally has. Um, but it also helped me to manage my ADHD better because you have to have structure in that stuff. Right. Um, And so I had enough structure, but it helped me to do structure on a couple of things. And I had friends that were doing it with me. So I had support system in there. And those weren't necessarily things that I had as a younger man. And it's been 10 years now, you know. Um, So it really introduced me to some things that I probably needed to be in a better place to take care of my physical health. And beyond that, it forced me to educate myself, which I think was the biggest thing, the education about like, what is protein? What are carbohydrates? Like what, what's healthy body comp? Like it forced me to educate myself. So I think the biggest thing for me for my physical health was the education that that brought. Yeah. Um, 
very straightforward. Like I, I wish there was more to it, but like when you know better, like it's very hard to settle for less. Um, like when we start seeing ourselves as worth more, it's hard to settle for things and people that treat you as less. Yeah. Um, so, so that education was huge for me um, because it made me recognize what I was and wasn't getting. Um, in terms of the mental health side, um, yeah, I, I think therapy w- was a huge, huge step forward for me. But one of the biggest parts of that, I think, was uh, meditation and mindfulness. Um, and it sounds so dumb. I know it, it sounds like such a simple thing. And everybody's like, I can't like keep my mind quiet. And I was like, oh, talk to me about keeping my mind quiet, please. Um, it's impossible. <laughs> it's almost yeah. impossible. But that's kind of some of the beauty of it is you let those thoughts come, you let those thoughts go. And what it taught me to do was it, it taught me so much better on how to pay attention to my body, like physically and mentally. Um, not only things like muscular tension and where we hold our stress and what that means for me, but also like now I'm not starting my day at a seven out of eight for what I can handle with stress and frustration and anger. You know, I, I can wake up and I know, oh, wow, like things are tough still. I didn't get a great night's sleep. I'm going to start my day. I'm going to maybe do 10 minutes of meditation. I'm going to reset. So now I'm not starting my day at seven or eight. And so now I don't notice until I hit a 10 and, and shit's flying. Um, I'm going to bring myself back down to a three. So now when I notice that stuff is going tough, when I notice that there's issues, when I notice that, you know, I just don't feel happy. I don't feel good. I can take care of it while it's at a five. Well, it's still manageable. Um, and so like figuring out how to do that and forcing the patience and forcing the time to really invest in that. I think that was one of the biggest things for my mental health because now also I'm not as stressed out all the time. There's not always something on the books that I have to deal with. Like, yeah, some things are important. Some things need my attention pretty immediately, but there's a lot of other things that I can be mindful about and say, you know what, this feels important right now, but it's not. Um, and it can wait. And so I don't have to stress about it right now. I can deal with it when the time comes. And 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 that has had just an absolutely profound impact on like my stress and anxiety levels in life as a whole. Um, so I, I think those are probably the, the two big things. So not competition because of competition, competition because it forced me to educate myself, which it doesn't for everybody. Some people won't, but that education that came from it that called me to be better. It forced me to have a higher standard for myself and what I was doing. And then through that also, because it makes me understand that that mental health is a big aspect. It ain't easy to deal with. Um, and to say that meditation is going to change everything for you, it might not. There's probably plenty of other things we need to work on. I know for me there were, but it really helped me to be, be able to start being more introspective. And I think that was an opening to get better at the other stuff. Yeah, I think um, it's funny because learning more about ADHD when our son got diagnosed and we were looking at stuff and I was like reading through it and I was like, oh shit, like that's me. And like everything made (laughs) way more sense. And then, you know, I had had two doctors say something when like I had started therapy postpartum and I was like, you're crazy. And then when I learned more stuff, I was like, okay, so this makes sense. And I don't know if it was that way for you when like you were a kid, but I feel like ADHD when I was a kid was something that like, that was when it got like super popular or whatever. And you were hearing it like nonstop. The same age, 100%. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so then it was almost like, like there was something wrong with you or something. Like if you had ADHD, like you just didn't have discipline or like something there. So and because it it came off as like an overdiagnosis. So like they're telling everybody they have friggin' ADHD now. So like, take it with a grain of salt. It doesn't matter. Just handle it. Like, you don't, you're fine. Right. But then learning yeah. what it, like how your brain ends up working and like things like that makes so much more sense. And what's funny is I'll have people, you know, who will say something about like the stuff that I do or like the hobbies, right. Or like how I have to have a million things going on and things. And they're like, that's amazing. I wish I could do stuff like the way that you do. I wish I could do all that or something. And I want to be like, <laughs> Well, I hate it. Um, I hate it so much. <laughs> a lot of it is just unmedicated ADHD. And no. it's like coping mechanisms is that like, I know I thrive in structure, but like you throw a wrench in my structure. 
all hell breaks loose and like Vic will <laughs> see it. And he's like the most even keeled guy. And I am the exact opposite. I am stressed out about everything all the time. And like, it's like, a hot- like my household. Right. So I'm always telling people like stress is my hobby. Um, and things will send me into a spiral. And then of course, nothing's worse than if Vic looks at me and goes, you're spiraling. And then it's like, <laughs> like it gets even worse. <laughs> you're like, like, I am, let's find the that. bottom. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like now I'm an F5 tornado. Um, and, but like, I'll talk to a lot of people who will bring up stuff like that and they'll let that stress throw them out of the routines and then they go completely to where it's like the wild west and nothing's navigated mm-hmm. anymore and like it's definitely there's a range again right like you you don't want to be like ocd where like now you need medication for that and like you're too much and like things are that bad but i have found that for myself and especially for our son and i mean for all of our children recently or really if we have some sort of structure to our days, if we have very clear, um, instructions or reasons for things, it helps motivate and like get things done. Um, and so like mentally putting a lot of that stuff into place has helped a lot. And then the other side of it, like looking at the physical health, like I learned more about making sure that Riker has protein and movement before we go to school means that Mm -hmm. like, we've been able to like, right now he's not on medication because we were having a really hard time figuring out what worked well for him. And we went through some really bad ones. And so like, right, he hasn't been on stuff all summer school started today. We'll see how things go. <laughs> um, and so, cause medical insurance, they wanted like $700 a month for his prescription because they stopped making the generic one or whatever. So it was like a disaster. Um, but Wait, you know, which one did they stop making a generic on? Um, Concerta. Oh, they stopped. Oh, that sucks. And then to get brand name Concerta, my I insurance. Oh yeah. It's expensive. I think and it's so like 300 like, a month down here. We wanted 750. And I was like, that's crazy. We'll come up with something different. <laughs> and then we yeah. tried one where um, within like four days, he was weeping about everything and like just wanted to sleep all the time. And like the world like literally was ending mm-hmm. in his mind. And then I read the reviews and it was like really bad, especially for boys and stuff. And so then I was like, you know what? Let's just take a break and we'll work yeah. on the, the, um, Oh gosh, what do they call it? Uh, like the behavior modifications and like things like that. Yeah, so, the cognitive behavioral stuff. Yes, that's what it is. So I found like um, making sure he has protein before school, making sure we uh, pack protein filled snacks can really help because you don't want them to bottom out. Um, activity. Yep. I try to make sure we, we didn't get it in this morning, but I used to have him go do a mile on the treadmill before school. And then I always tell his teachers if he's being much make him go move, like make him go run a lap (laughs) or something like that. And he'll get better with stuff. So that education piece was like a huge game changer, like in helping me just like lean into my own, like, and you know, people will look at us who have this like lifestyle to the extent that we do. Right. And be like, Mm -hmm. that's weird. Like, it's weird that you do this. It's weird that you do that. And it's like, well, is it though? Like, especially if it's serving us really well and we're not leaning into other bad habits. And like, that's where that you have to look at what's working for you and what's serving your overall life and like yeah. have an honest approach with it. And I think that introspection is a thing a lot of people miss out on and they don't want to deal with because like you said, it's super uncomfortable. It doesn't feel hard. good. So yeah. hard. Um, And like, I, I am known for not being like a super... Uh, emotional guy like cool thanks adhd uh what's it called when like um disassociation like cool whatever um but it's not easy like the hardest things that i've had to do was not like powerlifting to squat 500 or deadlift 600 pounds right the hardest thing that i've had to do um was not dieting to get on stage with striated glutes the hardest thing i've ever had to do was call myself on my bs talk to somebody about it and figure out better ways to manage it Cause I mean, like, dude, I was diagnosed as a kid for sure. Um, and then re-diagnosed as an adult, but I went all the way through graduate school with no, like not ever getting medicated or dealing with anything. And then eventually I was, I, I just kind of said, all right, we got to accept it. It is what it is. I got medicated. I was like, oh, wow. Like things are easier now. Like right. I'm not spouting out so much garbage nonsense all the time. You know, I can stay on task for more than 15 minutes before having to take a break to go do something else, right. you know, and work on something else. 
Um, so like with a very easy thing to talk about the ADHD. Yeah. But exercise has always helped. Right. And it, it's helped him with other things as well. You know, um, my father had eating disorder in his life as well. He was also, a, a, had depression, um, and he had bipolar. So obviously like, you know, it might not be bad enough, but those things can obviously trickle down, but exercise is a great way to help with like, you know, sometimes when I'm feeling sad is like, and I don't want to work out is one of the best times for me to work out because it forces me to get out of the house, forces me to see the sunlight, forces me to like my body to release some endorphins. Like it, it gives you like a break within that time. And that's why a lot of people are so often apt to be like, the gym is my therapy. The gym can make us feel better for sure. Um, but remember, therapy is a little bit different. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a dissociation, um, right? Is what the gym can help with a little bit where it's like course. compartmentalizing a touch. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I mean, you know, those are, those are all big things. And I'm sure we could talk about that for probably another hour if we really wanted to go on. But, right. yeah. you know, it, it's about being open and honest with yourself where you're at, finding things that work for you, um, getting things in like digestible bites, right? Um, and, and then finding those things that are, you're going to be able to keep up. And once you have mastered this first thing, now we can work to the second thing. Um, but we don't want to try and do 42 things at once. Um, I have ADHD. I still fail at trying to do 42 things at once. It doesn't work for me. Right. Um, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I always bring up like we can only chase, like successfully chase one rabbit at a time. Like you're only, you can, you might chase two, but you're only going to catch one probably. And so we got to figure out like, what is that priority? And I feel like a lot of times when it comes to our healthy decisions, um, it's not as like you said at the beginning, it's simple, but it's not simple, but generally like, there's no, there's no secret. Like you see these magazine right. headlines and stuff like that, where they're like, the secret, the doctors aren't telling you. No, like that's What's bonkers. Secret? What are they not telling me? <laughs> right. Like, first of all, like it, it, it's just, it's so, I could go in a whole thing there. Um, it, it's super simple in that your gut, like your mind gut and your actual gut will both instantly tell you if the decisions you're making make sense. Right. And like, you kind of just have to go with the things that we know are smart. We should have fruits and veggies. We should have enough protein to keep our muscle around. We should move our body. We should see the sun, drink your water, like things like that. Like start with those very basics, which to a lot of people are like, oh, duh. But like, you'd be amazed at how many people I talk to who aren't doing that. And so like, we can start there and then pay attention to like what is actually adding to your life. And if there's something like a behavior you have, we usually know if it's like, mm, I should probably stop that. Well, then make steps to kind of tweak it in the other direction. And it doesn't mean saying goodbye to alcohol 100%. It means maybe two drinks max. It doesn't mean never having biscuits and gravy. It means maybe saving it for a super bomb Sunday brunch or something like that. And like figuring out what makes sense. But most of the time, like everybody wants this answer of like, oh, you know what you have to do? Never eat strawberries again. Like there's this one absolute and it's really moderation. Like, unless you're Claire, she's allergic to strawberries, so she can't have those, but like, <laughs> it's moderation majority of the time with most things. And then paying attention to your mental and physical health and literally how you feel on a day-to-day -day basis and working to make that better. Like you should enjoy yeah. life for the most part, not always, yeah. but like, I feel like most days you should be able to go to bed and be like, that was challenging in a fulfilling way. I... Yep. Like I did something hard. I, that's one thing I tell my clients all the time. Do something that scares you. Go into the gym, pick up a weight that's scary. Try it. If you do that every day, you will progress. Like put yourself- Maybe in not the most scary weight, but the little bit scary just, weight. Just a tiny bit scary. Yeah, don't die. Um, <laughs> just a little bit scary, right? Um, I mean, for me, because I have my wonky shoulder, like- my comfort zone is 20 to 25 pound dumbbells for shoulder presses. And I can do those for like 15 to 20 reps, right? I can't, I'm not going to go to the point where I'm doing 35 reps of 25s. Like I eventually right. have to pick up the scary 30, but because I have a, like a shoulder that had to be repaired, it makes me super nervous to have that instability with stuff. But every now and then I'll 
pick it up and find out how many reps I can do. And it slowly went from like five to six and like you go from there. And so that challenge is healthy, that, that a little bit of fear is important. And so you just like the introspection, the paying attention to, am I challenging myself? Am I focusing on the things that I should? Am I fixing things I know are nagging me? Like stuff like that can go a long way in getting us in that health barometer. I thought we were going to try and keep it simple. And now there's a whole list of things we've already hit. We did. <laughs> go on forever. We're not good at this. <laughs> hey, well, you can put two people that are happy to overshare with ADHD with like yeah. two million different places <laughs> to go. We could do this for like eight hours. <laughs> for sure. So I think the last thing I'll say, and one of the most important things is celebrate your victories, no matter how small or, you know, insignificant it might seem celebrate your damn victories. Um, don't be that person that only sees the finish line. And if you're not at the finish line, it's not good enough. That's BS 100% through and through. If you are challenging yourself, if you are getting better, it doesn't matter how big of a step you're taking. If you are taking some semblance of a step forward, that's a win. That step forward could mean we lost half a pound. Shit. That step forward could mean we maintained weight. It could mean we got to the, it, it can mean whatever. If you're making positive progress, that's something that should be celebrated. That's something that a lot of us don't do, that we might not get um, and doesn't always happen. So when you, things are going even in that direction, take your time, pat yourself on the back. Maybe don't treat yourself. It might be, might not be treat yourself time, but like acknowledge it and, and give yourself credit where credit is due. Something is always better than nothing. Yeah. Forward progress. Like that any little bit is something getting you in the right direction if you're not backsliding, you know? So yeah. I love that. Well, today was fun. Thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate you. Hey. Do you have Jabba the Hutt on your shirt? It it's it I do. It says Jabba the Cut. It's just one of those it's one of the core shirts they gave me. All I saw was Java and I somehow didn't see that at all until just now. And I was like, oh, I don't feel like Java gets, you know, he doesn't get represented on t-shirts very often, probably. Very rarely, I think. Nobody's um, like, you know what I need? I need a big blob and make him green with a weird face on my shirt. <laughs> yeah. But no. Nope. So, yeah. It was just, I was going to wear a different shirt, but the color on the shirt just felt good. To, it felt right. I was like, I need, I need something that's not a black shirt because I don't want to be in a black mood. Oh, see, that's Weird. the decision for your day. I okay. applaud that decision for you. <laughs> All right, All right guys. Well, hopefully we'll talk to you guys soon. Soon? Yeah. I don't know. Sure. And then let us know what you think. Obviously, they don't, they can comment on the podcast, right? Yes. And then on uh, the podcast. I've been trying to have more like conversations and things like that too, over on our YouTube page, because all of these get posted to YouTube. So if you ever want to watch us chatting away and all the hand motions that you don't see when we're doing podcasts and things like that, um, go over there. Or me muting and coughing. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Sometimes it's me muting and then going and yelling at a child or something like that. So, um, yes, fun stuff there. And then if you ever have any, uh, questions or ideas, leave a comment or you can email us. Um, it's just our first name at ProBezeek and, uh, let me know how we can make sure you guys are learning stuff and enjoying being here with us in this little community. Cool. All right, Steven, talk to you soon. Bye guys. All right. Bye.